HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the latest on Hiller Playoff Sports, scenes from the 32nd Annual Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Hopkinton Board of Health hosted a public hearing and adopted two new regulations related to tobacco products. One of the regulations states that any tobacco sales license returned to the Board of Health will be permanently retired, which essentially means that if a business closes down or decides to stop selling tobacco products and surrenders their license, that license would not be available for another business. The other regulation set forth was a separate $100 permit for tobacco non-electric products and electric products. Two $100 permits would be needed if a business wanted to sell both non-electric and e-cigarette tobacco products. The American Red Cross will be hosting a blood drive at Hopkinton Middle School the blood drive will take place on Saturday, February 29th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. You can find information on how to donate at our website, hcam.tv. The winter season playoffs are underway and Hiller boys and girls basketball was in action this week. Here's what happened. This past Monday, the 11th seeded 10 and 10 Hopkinton Hillers girls took on 6 seeded Wayland in the girls Central Division 2 sectionals. The Hillers led 16 to 10 after the first quarter of action. Lauren Cho dropped 9 points in the first frame, but the Wayland offense came alive in the second quarter and early foul trouble led to 9 points off of free throws for the Warriors. Wayland outscored Hopkinton in the second, 26-6, and led at the half, 36-22. The third quarter was more back and forth, but Wayland kept pace with Hopkinton and outscored the Hillers, 13-12. It was a 49-34 Wayland lead heading into the fourth. Despite a couple of Kiki Fossbender field goals, Wayland was able to maintain and took the game 57-45. In the game, Kiki Fossbender put up 15 points, while Lauren Cho had a team-high 18 points. It was a great effort by the Hillers, but they will end their season with a record of 10 wins and 11 losses. Wayland advanced to the quarterfinals and fell to Medfield and a close one, 56-51 on Thursday night. Congratulations to head coach Mike Greco and the girls on a tremendous season. The Hopkinton boys entered the Central Division II bracket as the eighth seed with a 10-10 record. In the first round, they went to Grafton High School and took on the first seeded 18-2 Grafton Indians and the game was a back and forth battle the whole way. Here's a look. Sony launches a three, no good, just wide. Put back, and a great feed over to Rosen, up and in. He goes for the first points of the game. Here comes Utara. Utara working down the lane, feeds it out. Now back to the corner to Palmer. He'll drive along the baseline, up and in. Ooh, that was too easy for Palmer. He saw the lane on the baseline. He cut up with the left hand and in. 
Takes it down the lane, spins around the defender, up and good! What a, a sweet move! Oh, a skillful move, Tom, that was pretty. Down the lane, and he's blocked. And it is collected by Rosen, and he puts it in. Feeds it over, here comes Palmer, taking it to the rack, up and in he goes. Gotcha. Rosen up, and the foul. Rosen turns around, up and in. Looking like Kevin McHale on that one. Great stride, pivot, up and off the glass. Maybe he'll get a new nickname out of you. Utara for three, oh. got it. Woo! Mara Utara right at the buzzer. After one quarter of play, it's Hopkinton 13, Grafton 11. Down the lane, Ooh. off the window and in. Count it. Here comes Utara trying to respond. And he lost it. Yep. Hiller's basketball. Clyde's with Ambersoni, and Ambersoni's shooken up. Fires it to the corner, up for a three. McInerney got it. It was only a matter of time before McInerney hit one of those shots. Well, speeds it out to Boder, now Utara. Driving in, up, and he oh. slams it down. Oh, boy. And that brings the crowd to their feet. Wow. Powerful slam by Utara. Rosen driving in, around the defender, up, and in he goes. Good pivot move by Rosen. And Five seconds of counting left to go. Down the lane, up for the shot. Got it! Oh, big bucket. And after one half of play, it's the Hopkinton Hillers leading the Grafton Indians 27 to 22. Back to Ambersoni. Feeds it in Finfrock. Oh. Rosen finishes! Driving in around the defender, up. Count it. Mm. Bergenholtz puts Grafton within three. Finfrock, Maffiori, tips it over to Ambersoni. And it's stripped away. Here comes Palmer. Palmer, coast to coast, to the rack, up and in, plus the foul. Yeah. Rankatori back to Rosen. Rosen surrounded by defenders, kicks it out to Maffiori, up for three. Got it! Oh. What a quarter of play that was. We are knotted up at 37 apiece, heading to the final eight minutes. Stay tuned, folks. You are not going to want to miss the conclusion of this game. Cooper for three. Count it! Ooh. Matt Cooper knocks it down! The junior comes through big, and the Hillers are up by eight. Infrock down the lane, trying to get it out to Rosen. Regathers off the Ooh. fingertips and in! Left hand finger roll, beautiful shot by Finfrock. Sony driving in up, and good! Using his body. Special, I think, just missed the collision. Mafiori is down in some pain. Amber Sony over to Cooper. Back to Amber Sony now. Looking for where to go with it. Gonna fire to Finfrock, Ooh. tip to Rosen, and Rosen finishes! What a beauty of a tip by Finfrock. Best pass of the night, Finfrock, giving his team the lead. Up for three, oh. got it. What a response by McInerney. That clock run down, shot clock at 15 seconds. Maffiori calling it out. Hillers need to get a shot off soon, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Amber Sony driving in around the defender, oh, off the window wow. and in. Maffiori has been tough as nails today and a big shot. Second of two, got it. Huge free throws. Hillers up by six. Over to Utara. Utara gonna likely take a three. No, he'll take it to the rack, off the window and in. You needed a three there if you're grafted. That's gonna do it. The Hopkinton Hillers are going to take down the first seeded Grafton Indians and advance on to the semifinals. A 59 to 55 win over Grafton. Unbelievable. Tom Nappy alongside head coach of the Hopkinton Hillers, Tom Keen. Coach, what a tremendous win against the very good Grafton team out there tonight. Yeah, it was a great win against a team that's the number one seed and 18 and two, and they've had a phenomenal year. So it was really a testament to how hard our kids played tonight that we were able to beat such a good team. And Elon Rosen had a tremendous night putting up 25 points. Can you talk about his performance? Yeah, he's been playing great the last few games, and he's really set the tone for us. I think he had something like 17 or something in the first half, and uh, he's so athletic. And when he's shooting the ball well, we are uh, a much better team. And a, a tremendous performance tonight all around in the low post. It seemed that the Hillers uh, dominated in the low post for the most part. Uh, to do that against a, a Grafton team like this, could you just talk about what it says about your roster this year? Yeah, you know, we didn't necessarily shoot the three as, as well as we usually shoot it, but the low post play, as you said, really carried the day for us. 
and I think that both teams were playing very hard defensively, and so there weren't a lot of easy baskets in that game at all. And uh, like you said, the post, low post was definitely where we had a little bit of an advantage tonight. And how good does it feel as an eighth seed to come down and take down the first seed? It feels fantastic. You know, I don't think I've ever had a team where we're the lowest seed and we beat the top seed in the tournament. And uh, Coach Petratus is one of my best friends. You know, uh, we played together at Anna Maria College. So to be your best, one of your best friends in the tournament makes it even sweeter. <laughs> Bragging rights for a while, right? Bragging rights for a little bit. <laughs> Congratulations, exactly. Coach. Thank you so much. Tremendous win. Yeah, Tom you. Nappy here with Elon Rosen. Tremendous game out there. How does it feel to take down first seeded Grafton? It feels really good. Uh, we put a lot of work in. It was a big upset, and we're really proud of it. And uh, can you just talk about um, your performance tonight? You put up 25 points. Just had a tremendous night in the low post. Yeah, I don't know. It, I just started making a lot of shots. Uh, just, just a great performance, really. I don't know what to say about it. Uh, I just like to shout out uh, Sean Ellis for his amazing, uh, like, multi-dimensional performance on the court and on the bench. It was amazing. And how was the atmosphere tonight? Uh, fantastic atmosphere. We got our fans right at our back and uh, just a ton of energy. We felt like we were at home game. And how did it feel to take down a number one seed? Fantastic. All right, best of luck in the next round. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Here with Stephen Maffiori. Stephen, a tremendous game by you guys out there. How does it feel to take down first seed Grafton? Uh, it feels awesome. You know, throughout the year, we, we started off real strong. And, you know, we had a, had a couple bumps, obviously, you know, with Coach Gone and things like that. So to be able to come out here and uh, get a win on the road, especially against a great team like Grafton, uh, we're really excited and we're happy we get, get to keep playing. And um, you played through some pain today, but it doesn't seem like you missed a beat. Can you talk about your performance? Uh, you know, it just, we all, I mean, we're all contributed in a great way. You know, my, my job on the team is to try to make shots, and you know, that's, luckily that's, my shots went in today. But, you know, Elon, Tommy, Travis, you know, everyone who played today really stepped up. And it's not a one-man thing. It's really the whole team. And without the guys that went in, and even the guys that didn't go in today, you know, uh, the guys that stayed on the bench, they, they were up every whistle, up every bass. You know, they, they, they gave us confidence. So it's real awesome. I mean, I'm happy I play well, but it's real, really a team win. And what's it like playing with this group? You guys seem to look like you have a good time out there. Oh, it's awesome. Uh, we've all been together since we started playing basketball. You know, there's eight, eight of us seniors, and then all the, we're all real close to the juniors too. So it's awesome to be able to play with those guys and you know, get a win with them. So we're tight. We love playing together, and we have fun. How's the leg feeling? It's been better. Uh, <laughs> not going to lie, but I'll be all good, and we're going to hopefully keep it rolling. All right, well, congratulations and best of luck in the next round. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. Yep. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. The Hopkinton boys advance on to the semifinals round and will play the winner of Westboro and Milford at Clark University Tuesday, March 3rd at 7.45 p.m. Congratulations on a tremendous win to Coach Keene and the Hopkinton Hillers. Coming up next, scenes from the 32nd Annual Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton High School hosted their 32nd annual Science and Engineering Fair, and with 41 projects on display, there was a whole lot to see. Here's a look. The annual Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair took place, and many projects were on display. We found a, a organism called slime mold that's basically really good at designing optimal pathways. It has been proven to like to 
Like, for example, the uh, interstates, like, it designed those by itself, which took other designers, like, over 50 years to do. So, we, so basically, our question was, could it do it for Huntington on a smaller scale? And the result is, not exactly, but it can still help a lot in the road design process. So, if you look here, that's our modified version, and uh, that's, like, the old version. And uh, here's the slime mold like version of it that we three printed out, and uh, yeah. So you may notice that this, this is the old road. It took twice as long for from here to go to either of these roads. So basically, the problem was traffic was jamming there. So slime mold didn't design the best path. However, we did notice where it was jamming right there. It also uh, kind of like cluttered up. It got it's like a thicker yellow dot than uh, around the rest. So we concluded that while it can't exactly design awful pathways by itself, it can actually help and find like flaws like where traffic would jam on roads before they're developed. The judges chose 15 finalists to head to the regional tournament at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. So our project was about developing a genetically identical cell line or a protocol for a genetically identical cell line specific to Huntington's disease, which is a fatal uh, and debilitating neurodegenerative disorder that affects approximately 1 in 10,000 people. And our goal was to develop it uh, in a manner that produces a genetically identical cell line so that we could expedite the research process for investigators and hopefully establish a basis for therapies and cures in the future given that there are no uh, permanent therapies or cures available for the disease right now. Now. Ultimately, we uh, verified our uh, cell line's uh, success uh, with many quantitative tests such as qPCR and PCR, uh, finding that we indeed did uh, do genetic, perform genetic alterations on the uh, cell lines, and then we later applied the cell lines in our own applications tests to see if the fidelity we were trying to achieve with these genetically similar cells uh, was achieved, and we did uh, seeing uh, uh, result, good results across the board. Um, this is probably the culmination about a year, year and a half's worth of work. This is a continuation from our science fair project last year, and we are continuing the research. Well, not really sure when we're going to stop, but uh, we're continuing it for now. And you guys are uh, you're going to the science fair, correct? The regional science fair, yep. Terrific. How did it feel to be one of the winners today? Um, we felt really, we felt, we felt really, I felt really good. What did you? Yeah, it always feels good to move on to the next uh, level of competition, so, uh, We'll be happy Congratulations, there. guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. My project is titled The Patient-Specific Delivery of Proton Beam Radiation. So uh, many people get tumors in, in America. They're estimated to be about 700,000 people with tumors in America. And around 90,000 are expected to be diagnosed this year. And um, these tumors in the head and neck area are really difficult to treat using conventional forms of radiation. That's why doctors use this special type of radiation called proton beam radiation. Uh, what's nice about proton beam radiation is that it loses most of its energy in a really, really small location in space called the Bragg peak. So if we can position the Bragg peak inside the tumor, then we're good and we damage the tumor less than the surrounding healthy tissue. But that begs the question, which angle should, I, should the doctors uh, administer the radiation at so that the least amount of healthy tissue is damaged, right? You want as little collateral damage as possible while doing proton beam radiation. So my, pro, my, uh, my project attempts to solve exactly this problem, to try to find the best angle to administer proton beam radiation so that we damage the least amount of healthy tissue. So now, in this, I've taken into account the energy loss in each piece of tissue and also the relative importance of each tissue and I've designed a way to calculate the damage that is done to healthy tissue. And then what I do is I have my program take in an image of a patient. At, at the moment, it supports four, uh, four different types of tissues. Um, it takes in their weightages, it takes in an image, and then it spits out which angle the radiation should come out at so, so as to minimize the damage to the healthy tissue. Right, so I've been working on this project since, uh, well, around November. It's where I started emailing people from Mass General Hospital to see if I could get some information. 
How did it feel to be one of the winners tonight? <laughs> it feels pretty good, I guess. I mean, yeah. Uh, so what an exciting day. This was definitely one of the largest fairs in school history. We had 41 projects, um, I think over 85 students represented of 9th through 12th graders. So such an exciting day and so wonderful to have this much enthusiasm in the town for science and engineering. Terrific. And uh, can you tell us about your thoughts on some of the projects? Uh, it's like some amazing work that is yeah. beyond the uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's always so much fun to see what high school students are interested in exploring and it's always really inspiring to me to see how many of them take on problems that affect their families, their neighborhood, their communities and really want to make a difference. Um, so many of these ideas are so bold and ambitious and it makes me really hopeful for the future that this generation is going to solve a lot of our problems and make the world better. And as corny as that sounds, I think there's there's nothing better as a teacher than seeing students take what they've learned in all their classes K through 12 and apply it to solving a really important problem. So. Those are the most fun types of projects to see. Yeah, so we're really excited. We will send 15 projects on to WPI to compete at the regional fair. That's in mid-March. And then um, the top 30 projects from there will go on to the state fair and maybe a handful on to the international fair. So really, it's just kind of getting started now. Um, so lots of projects here that are, are have an option for the next steps, and we're really excited for the next few weeks all together. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, Hopkinton. Matt Clark here to bring you everything happening this week on HCAM. So sit back and get ready for this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, February 28th at 5 p.m., poet, writer, and musician Anna Friedrich performs her poetry on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, March 2nd at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod talks with attorney Kathleen Nealon about planning ahead on a new episode of Senior View. And at 7 p.m., the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, March 4th at 7 p.m., Arthur Paul Clarisi talks with running coach Bill Squires on a new HCAM TV special. And on Thursday, March 5th at 8.30 p.m., Arthur and Amy chat with Veteran Service Director Sarah Bateman on a new episode of Frank and Mary in Hopkinton. And on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Ice Hockey vs. Medfield game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and we'll talk to you again soon. Here's a look at some of the top prizes that were given out to science and engineering fair participants. There's also a lot of projects in here that hit a lot of roadblocks that made it a pretty, a pretty challenging winter. And we think there's a lot to be learned, but that doesn't always necessarily get you, get you the award, right, or the prize at a science fair. And so we really think it's important to recognize projects, and every year we try and pick one in particular that really embody the perseverance that's so important for scientific and engineering projects. Um, and we've named this award after one of my favorite mentors, my favorite science fair mentor, Val Lecanti, again, who ran the science fair program, built this entire program, and just retired last year. 
Um, for anyone who worked with her, had her as a teacher, some of you and your parents might have, or um, worked with her for science fair, she's incredibly dedicated and one of the most hardworking teachers you'll ever work with. And whenever she ran into a trouble mentoring a project or teaching something, she always persevered and figured out a way to make it work. And so we look for a project that kind of embodies that spirit of Val and that um, made her such a great teacher and a great mentor and a great scientist. And so this year, we're very excited to award this prize to Deirdre Belger and Morgan Berenson. Uh, so Morgan and Deirdre ran into some trouble, which is all of their fruit flies died. And then instead of saying, oh, well, what are we going to do now? And I said, I have no more money for you. Um, they came up with a whole other procedure they could add to their project. They figured out how to do a titration. When I ran into getting the flu, they figured out how to do it without a mentor there, and they did a really great job, and I was so impressed that as sophomores, they were able to basically do two projects in one winter, and they never let a disappointing result keep them down. So there is a plaque downstairs outside the science um, offices where their names will be engraved, and what a, what a great legacy to, to carry on that perseverance. So congratulations. Okay, so the top three prizes, we're really excited. We have a wide range of projects and grades represented, which is always really exciting. So in third place, we are thrilled to announce this uh, prize goes to Sahibi Pagula and Tanisha Rajgore. Efficient detection and mitigation. <laughs> Efficient detection and mitigation of neurological diseases using machine learning, ANN, and regressional models. and you saw. Okay, and then our top prize this year goes to a senior we're very excited to honor. He had a, quite a busy day. Not only did he win first prize at Science Fair, he then went and took a three-hour math test and came back to collect his prize. So uh, we have a lot of very talented students. We're very proud of him. This goes uh, first place goes to Adwe Nene. Yeah. Patient specific delivery of proton beam radiation. So, congratulations. <laughs> All right, so those are our top three projects. Congratulations. And now we are going to announce 12 additional projects that are going to move on to regionals. The regionals is on March 13th at WPI. Um, these are in no particular order, so 